In this video, we're going to provide an overview of Integrity's newly released Researcher API. So what's the purpose of this new API? Firstly, we want to reduce the number of manual tasks. So researchers commonly develop their own custom scanning tools or use automation frameworks, and our platform needs to have the capability to integrate with those. To do that, we need to make sure that we have a system to deal with tokens so that researchers don't have to log in and manually extract tokens to use with their custom scripts. And the second key purpose is to reduce missed opportunities for researchers, but also improve in results for programs. So previously, researchers needed to manually search for any scope changes, domain changes, submission changes, etc. And now, using the API, they can better keep track of any changes and ensure that vulnerabilities aren't missed. The capabilities of the Researcher API will expand over time, but in the beginning, you'll be able to retrieve a list of programs with the ability to filter on criteria such as the program type or the status. Once you have that list of programs, you can drill down on any of those specifically by looking for information on what's in or out of scope and also any rate limiting, user agents, and configuration that needs to be applied according to the program requirements. You can keep track of program activities, so you'll be able to stay informed about any changes to programs like the real-time information on the domains that are in scope, or the rules of engagement, and you can download different versions so that you can diff those automatically. So how do you use this new Researcher API? Well, you can generate personal access tokens on the Integrity platform, and they will have an expiration of either 30, 60, or 180 days. You can also manually revoke one, so if it falls into the wrong hands, or you want to remove it for whatever reason, you can do that. But once you create a token, you will need to note it down, because there's no way to get access to that same token again through the platform. And using that token, you can make calls to the API and you can have a look at the Swagger documentation for the mappings of all the possible API calls and what to expect as a result. Okay, so let's have a quick demonstration of how we can generate a personal access token. If you go up to your user account in the top right hand corner and then go into personal access tokens, you'll have a list of all of the tokens that are currently active or revoked. And notice that I have two here, but I can't actually access either of them. So if I didn't note down this token, it means I can't retrieve it now. I'm going to revoke it because I have lost that token. And now that gives me an opportunity to demonstrate how we create a new one. So I'll create a new one, I'll just call it cats2. And then let's give it an expiration of 60 days. Continue, and then we have to take a copy of this token. It does warn us that we must have stored it in a secure way and that we will never have access to it again if we lose it. So there we go, I've agreed to that, and that means we can now go to the Swagger API and have a look at the documentation. So in here, I'll just go to Program, and I'll click on this drop down, and here are the different API calls we can make. So E1 Programs will get us all of the programs that we have access to. So if it's a private program and we haven't been invited, we won't be able to get that from here. And then we can also get information about a specific program. So let's say we use the first one to get a list of all the programs. We find a program ID that we're interested in, and then we use that ID to get specific information about that program. We can also get program activities for all programs, and we can retrieve the domains or the rules of engagement for a specific program. And here we have the version ID so that we're able to track any changes to programs. And maybe I want to see how one of these work then, so let's click on the little drop down by the programs, and then you've got the option to try it out. I click on execute. And it gives us a curl command that we could also copy to run the same thing in our command line. I notice we get back this error 401 access denied. And the reason being, I didn't actually give it authorization. So I need to put in my token here, click on authorize. And then if we go back down here and try it again, this time we get back a 200 and we have the program information. So we can have a look at what the max bounty, the minimum bounty, the confidentiality level, maybe we want to filter out programs that don't offer bounties or that offer a bounty under a certain amount. Or maybe we're looking for VDPs because we want to try and find something that doesn't have any bounties to ensure there's less competition. I'm going to select one of these that has an ID that is public. This one's public and open. So let's go down to the next section where we can get a program details. We need to give it an ID. Let's click try it out first and then paste that in. And this one comes back with the specific information for this program. 
So here we would see if there is any specific user agent we need to provide or if we need to give a request header, this would be in here. And also then any domains that are in scope will get those as well. So this might be particularly useful if you're looking for certain types of assets. Maybe you're only interested in Android applications that have an APK available. And it's not necessarily easy just to manually search through all the programs and see what has an Android component. So hopefully this will help to automate some of that process. We can also get all program activities and there are some filters here that we can use to say we only want them since this date and we want to limit how many we retrieve or we want to start off at a certain offset. I'll just go ahead and grab them all. So here we can see in the program activities that there were new domain versions added and that the rules of engagement changed and we can see the date that that happened. So maybe you'll want to set up some kind of script that automatically sends you a ping every time new domains are added to a certain program or every time the rules of engagement change because you want to be the first one in to find those bugs. Here's another API call just specifically to grab the program domains. So we'll try this one out. Let's give it the program ID and we need to give this one a version ID as well. So I'll go and grab this one. We click on execute and we get back the response and this will tell us notice these aren't real endpoints because I'm on the QA environment at the moment, but this will bring back all of the domains that are in or out of scope. And then the final call is to get the rules of engagement. So similar to what we just saw where we get the domains that are in scope. And I'm just going to go and grab the program ID for this one again as well. Paste this in here. Okay, I actually got a 403 to this one. It might just be because I'm on this QA environment. But you get the idea anyway. These are the API calls we can make. And this is the sort of data that we get back. And if you want to take a copy of any of these and take them over to command line you can just use curl to retrieve the same information and that's it you can start integrating this with your own custom tools and with your own automation frameworks and we're very interested to hear feedback from researchers so do let us know what data you'd like to see integrated in future if you find any bugs with the API and what kind of use cases you've got in mind for it what tools you'd most like to see this integrated with anyway hope you've enjoyed this video if you have any questions or comments leave them down below Thanks.